what I appreciated about a lot of the Jay Z recordings was that it just sounded like one clean take and it felt really personal. It felt like mm -hmm. I'm face to face with the artist that, that whose vocals you tracked. Right. Um, what made you kind of go against the grain when recording just one strong lead rather than layer, 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 layer? Well, first of all, that's just Jay's style, number one. Um, a lot of the time, and you have to give it to him in terms of people have this misconception about like, uh, they, you know, there's this famous thing that people always say, oh, Jay does it all in one take. And he does because of the fact that he constructs and goes over the rhyme so much before he even steps in the booth to record it, that by the time he gets in the booth, he's memorized the rhyme. There's no paper. There's no none of that. Right. He doesn't write it down. But the time is spent outside, you know, where we're kicking it about is the verse good? Am I saying the right thing? He's saying it over and over to himself as he's pacing back and forth, mumbling to himself. You know, everybody's heard about the Jay-Z mumble. So by the time he gets in the booth, it's simply to record it, right? And, and that leads to his style of like him, who he is as a person, you know, his personality. I think that one take, you know, not a whole lot of ad libs, not a whole lot of like even like say the Tupac style of like adding this, this uh, Tupac was famous for like adding another layer underneath of his lead vocal that was in a different, a lower texture, right? That was sort of like Pac style. Jay's style wasn't that way. And I think it was a thing of um, finding the right microphone for him. So, you know, classic, classic case of just me using traditionally throughout his career, I used either a Neumann 87 or a Neumann 67 um, going into a Avalon 737. So for almost the majority of his career, that was the vocal chain. Um, there were certain times where we would step into other people's, you know, worlds where like, say, Kanye might be using a 1073 into a CL1B, you know, and I have no problem recording Jay that way. Then, you know, a couple years ago, um, Stewart, who is Beyonce's engineer, came across these beautiful um, Telefunken 251s, which I'm not telling everybody you gotta go out, it's a very expensive microphone, but it's just a beautiful mic. So when I heard Jay, you know, it was just one of those days where it was like, oh, well, B just got done recording, Jay needs to record, the microphone's already up. I used that when I was just like, whoa, this thing sounds great on him. So now my chain is that uh, Telefunken 251 into just the preamp section of the 737, skipping the compressor, and then I go into a CL1B. So, you know, it's it's just by happenstance. And then I went out and found a 251 for myself and been like, yo, I want Jay to have this sort of microphone. Um, but it's just his style. Once he gets on the microphone, he's just going to rip through the whole vocal and you better be ready. You know, sometimes there's even takes where I've had to turn the preamp down real quick. So the first couple words are too loud and I'll go in and like clip gain those. But He's just going to go, you know, and you got to catch it. So very rarely does he need to like punch in or, you know, I, I can probably count on my hand the times that he maybe punched in on something. And that was just for ad libs. Like he will do the whole take, you know, in one take. And that's what allows it to be so continuous, so smooth or like the things on 444 where he like literally had a cold through a lot of those sessions and you can hear it. In the vocal takes, if you listen to Smile, if you listen to things like that, where he had a cold and I was, I would normally be like, yo, let's wait till your cold is gone to record. And he's like, no, it's going to add to the, I like the way my voice sounds like this. It sounds more personal. It sounds like I'm sick, you know, and these are those type of records. So with 444 being such a personal, you know, record, he was like, nah, that's adding on to the texture where I would have tried to be like technically correct. And he's going for feel where it's like, no, I'm supposed to sound like this. So, you know, you, 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 the ones where I was just like, let's just take it and we'll see what it is just to do the song. At the end, I was like, let's do it over. He's like, nope, keep those. It sounds exactly the way I want it to sound. So it, it just becomes a texture thing for him. 